current pandemics is giving rise to a very significant economic crisis. It's producing what we economists call a demand supply doom loop. On the one hand, the pandemics hits the supply side of the economy. It disrupts value chains. It reduces, therefore, output. It reduces labor demand. It reduces employment. As a result of that reduction in employment, but also as a result of the many measures adopted by governments all over the world in order to control the pandemics, the pandemics has also produced a negative demand shock. People stay at home, and as a result, they purchase less goods and services. They shift their demand from one, some products to others. They stop traveling. They stop going on vacation. That also reduces employment. And that generates, again, a new loop, because as demand goes down, supply goes down, and vice versa. This doom loop needs to be controlled. Or otherwise, the consequences, the economic consequences of the pandemics will be felt for a long period of time. Governments have been responding to these shocks <clears throat> by expanding money supply, although, you know, properly speaking, this has been at the action of central banks, but also by adopting expansive fiscal policy, paying for uh, you know, minimum income uh, uh, in order to protect those families that are more vulnerable, paying or supporting firms so that uh, they can be kept alive during these difficult days in which they are forced to close down because of the lockdowns, for example, paying unemployment benefits for temporary, for workers that are temporary, temporarily out of, uh, out of work, due again to the, to the lockdowns, supporting firms such as airlines, etc., because of the disruption in their businesses that is caused by the pandemics, which we would like to believe is temporary. A fiscal impulse of the magnitude of that that we have observed during these few months, the months of the pandemic, has not been seen for years. It's, you know, I think that we are in a sense in a situation that uh, looks very much the one that uh, results from a war. And as a result of that, governments are getting massively indebted. It is important, therefore, that these fiscal impulse, that these fiscal policies are successful. And that depends on what is the so-called fiscal multiplier, which gives us or tells us what's going to be the response of output to the fiscal impulse that the governments undertake. The greater the multiplier, the bigger will be and more successful will be the fiscal policies that the governments are adopting. The greater the positive impact on employment of those measures. And the more likely it is that we will reactivate our economies successfully and in the short term. So we need to adopt policies that make sure that the fiscal multiplier is large. And one of them is competition policy. Economic theory demonstrates, and empirical evidence has confirmed, that the fiscal multiplier is greater in economies that are competitive, when markups are not too high. Why? The reason is simple. If those economies are competitive, the increase in demand that results from the fiscal impulse will translate in an increase in output instead of an increase in pricing. In competitive markets, the increase in demand will have a much bigger impact on output and therefore on employment. And therefore, there will be a greater prospect that the doom loop, the supply doom loop generated by the pandemics is resolved sooner and to a greater extent. It is important, therefore, that we don't adopt during this period measures that uh, go counter to the promotion of competition. That in order to preserve certain businesses, we don't uh, restrict competition. That we don't facilitate mergers that are clearly anti-competitive, simply because we think that that increases the chances that the companies that are merging will survive in the medium to long term. We need to make sure that competition law enforcement remains active during these periods not only because of the traditional macroeconomic benefits that such policies bring about, 
but also because of the positive macroeconomic implications that competition policy will have during these difficult days. But that's not the only way in which competition policy authorities, competition authorities can help with the solution to the pandemics and economic crisis that it brings about. They also need to be very carefully monitoring the state aid that is being provided by governments to firms. They need to make sure that that money doesn't go to companies that have no prospect for survival. What in economics we call zombies, firms that are kept alive simply because a their managers don't go to one bank to go bankrupt, and their creditors, very often banks in financial difficulty, don't want to recognize that they represent non-performing loans, that they represent bad credits. They're kept alive by their creditors because the creditors find it more profitable to keep refinancing them than to kill them, to force them to go bankrupt. But that generates a very significant problem for the economy because those monies, those loans that go to those companies don't go elsewhere. And therefore, inefficient companies, companies that should be closed down, are absorbing valuable resources that would help other companies to grow, startups or more successful mature companies. And as a result, the so-called cleansing effect of recessions, which is an effect by which recessions throw out of the economy inefficient firms and allow the reallocation of resources to efficient firms, doesn't work. We need to make sure that in these days, we don't fall in the, the temptation of supporting inefficient firms, of keeping zombies alive, because that's going to preserve employment in the short term. Because the result of that would be that we would be depriving of funds to those firms that are efficient and who are likely to provide good jobs, jobs that are sustainable in the long term. So when companies approach governments to ask for a state aid these days, it is absolutely important that we understand or we investigate and analyze whether these companies are in dire straits because of the pandemics or they are in difficulties because they were zombies that have been kept alive for a long period of time. We also need to make sure that companies that may have been viable are only kept alive if in the future, in the new normality, in the new world that will emerge from when these pandemics ends, they're viable too. It is important to get rid of the zombies and this crisis presents an opportunity to do so. They have been stealing resources from financially viable and commercially viable firms. They are in part responsible for the reduction in the rate of growth of productivity in our economies. And as a result of that, they're also responsible for the modest, if not you know, uh, insufficient and insatisfactory rate of growth of wages in our economies. Let's make sure that zombies uh, disappear. Let's not feed them again with these resources, these fiscal resources that taxpayers are going to have to support in order to get away from the pandemics. Competition agencies, the European Commission in particular, should be very vigilant to make sure the governments don't fall in the temptation to keep those zombies alive in order to protect employment in the short term, but employment in the short term that will come at the cost of unemployment, inefficiency, low productivity, and low wages in the future. Let's hope that they do so. I think that they are aware of these problems, and I think that we can count on them. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.